It's really nice to be back in front of the YouTube cameras again, just a couple days after I had a baby. Um, I mean, my wife and I had a baby. And uh, today we're going to talk about um, the cameras that... Um, Welcome back DP Review TV viewers. It is Jordan Drake from DP Review to talk about the camera that changed my photographic life. Now this has been an ongoing series on dpreview.com. A lot of the staff have been posting articles about that one piece of gear or that camera that really changed the way they look at photography. Last week we had Chris talk about the piece of gear that changed his perspective on photography in a big way. And now it's my turn. Now, if I'm being totally honest, the first stills camera I ever had was actually a video camera. It was a Sony TRV 330. Fortunately, you could slide a memory stick, not even a memory stick Pro Duo, original memory stick in, and you could capture 640 by 480 pictures, which I did quite a bit back in the day. But obviously this was primarily a video camera and I recently talked about it on an episode of the Post Color Blog YouTube channel. I'll include the link in the description. But after taking a look at this camera, I was kind of curious if I could actually be able to use it again. The tape deck was damaged on it. But through a series of little cables and a Blackmagic converter box, we've managed to get it into my computer. So I think we should just shoot the rest of this episode on that camera. I still don't know why you're going to make me shoot on this broken piece of your childhood, Jordan. Just... Nos nostalgia is the only currency now. So if it looks old, people will be delighted. Trust me. You're going to make the S1 look amazing. And... Okay, the camera that changed my photographic life is the Panasonic GF1 that came back in 2009. Now, back then I worked at the camera store just as a regular camera salesperson, but when this thing came, it really upended my life in quite a few ways. For starters, this was the third mirrorless camera that was released to market, but it was the first one that really excited me for a couple of reasons. The biggest one, it was a small body. When I wanted to travel light, I could use it that way, but it had a removable electronic viewfinder, so it was still quite usable if I was in direct sunlight or I wanted to use some long lenses with it. The other thing that was really exciting is that this came with the 20 millimeter f1.7 Panaleica lens. And you have to remember, leading up to this, we had the Panasonic G1 with a 14 to 45 and a 45 to 200. Olympus also entered the fray with their original digital pen, the EP1, but that had the option of a 14 to 42 or a 17 millimeter f2.8 pancake, which wasn't going to give you a lot of separation from your subject. This is still a very well regarded lens, and it was sold as a kit with with the camera, which made it an incredibly compelling option for enthusiast photographers. The other thing that was really interesting about this is it seemed like it was built to be shot more with some manual settings in mind. Sure, there was only one dial on it, but you could use it to click between shutter and aperture or between exposure compensation and priority mode. It also had a dedicated ISO button and where the EP1 and the original Panasonic G1 seemed to really be built for people stepping up from point and shoot cameras, kind of replacing that Rebel or entry level Nikon DSLR kind of thing. This really seemed built to be a second camera for a lot of professionals, higher end enthusiasts, and it was for that reason I gravitated it. I didn't always want to bring around a big camera kit, but here we were starting to see the infancy of the real mirrorless advantages. Great optics, a small body design, and even though this is honestly a pretty terrible electronic viewfinder, I very quickly started to fall in love with getting exposure preview before I started shooting. So back at the camera store, the only other person who seemed as excited as me by this camera was Chris Nichols. And the spec list didn't really seem to do justice as to why we found it so interesting. So we were like, how can we present this camera in a slightly different way? And Chris, I need you to do some TRV magic and make this super exciting right now. Because in that moment, the two of us said, this is the first camera that we are going to make a f video of and it'll take the internet by storm. I want to show you guys a new Panasonic camera that we're very very excited about. This is a new Panasonic GF1. Looks like a small compact camera but this camera actually gives you a lot of the same features you would find in a full end SLR. And that was the first video we shot for what would eventually turn into the camera store TV which led to us getting a job with DP Review which led to me basically being a full-time YouTuber. It's all because this had a tiny lens on it and it was a pretty good camera. Oh, it is good to be back on the S1H. I mean, yes, camera technology has moved on a little bit in the last 20 years. The sound is certainly better and the pictures, you know, marginally better than what we just saw there. 
Don't forget everybody, take a look at some of the other gear that changed my photographic life articles that we're seeing from some of the other editors on dpreview.com. And also, I need to hear from my video people. What is the camera that changed your life? And I know it's primarily the uh, Canon 5D Mark II and the Rebel T2i. I'm aware of that, but still throw it in there. I wanna hear from my video people. And don't forget, we will see you guys all very soon on NAP. I mean, uh, on DP Review TV. Hey everyone, it's Jordan Drake from DP Review TV, and today I'm gonna to be talking about the camera that changed my photographic life. Why am I doing quotes? <laughs>